Since the beginning of the bull market in 2009, US stocks have completely crushed global stocks. But did you know that international stocks are expected to outperform US stocks by over 3% per year in the next 10 years? That's why it makes sense to hedge your bets and invest in both US and global stocks. In this video, we will look at four very different global portfolios that you can easily build yourself. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Global diversification is the key to portfolio construction. It has very little downsides but a lot of benefits. Benefit number one, yes US stocks have outperformed international stocks in the last few years but they often swap places after a longer time of outperformance. Benefit number two, international stocks currently have a higher expected return over the next 10 years than US stocks. According to a Vanguard model, the stock market performance of international stocks is expected to outperform US stocks by around 3% per year. Benefit number three, you reduce volatility. By adding international stocks to your US stock market portfolio, you can reduce volatility because you hedge your bets. In the last 50 years, the sweet spot for the highest volatility reduction was a mix of 40-60, so being invested 60% in US stocks and 40% in international stocks. And benefit number four, higher dividends. In the last 10 years, international stocks delivered a 1.3% higher dividend yield, so that's why it makes sense to invest globally and that's why all portfolios today are global portfolios right let's start with etf portfolio number one the world market cap portfolio and this one invests globally and weighs the country exposure by the size of their stock market so i had a look at the total stock market size by country which in a chart looks like this i then broke them down into us developed and emerging markets. What you end up with is an allocation like this, where around 40% of the global market cap is in the US, 30% in other developed countries, and 30% in emerging markets. And you can quite easily build this portfolio yourself. All you need is three ETFs, one ETF that invests in the US, one that invests in developed markets, and one for emerging markets. So one option for a US ETF would be Vanguard's total stock market ETF, ticker symbol VTI. The VTI invests in the total US stock market, so not just the 500 companies of the S&P 500, but in over 4,000 US companies. The VTI has a total expense ratio of 0.03%, which is one of the cheapest ETFs globally. One option for a developed markets ETF would be Vanguard's FTSE Developed Markets ETF, ticker symbol VEA. It also invests in more than 4,000 companies from 24 developed countries, excluding the US. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.05%, which is also one of the cheapest out there. And lastly, one option to invest in emerging markets would be the iShares Core MSCI Emerging Markets ETF, ticker symbol IEMG. It invests in 2,700 companies from 28 emerging market countries and has an expense ratio of 0.09%. If you now invest 40% of your money in the VTI, 30% in the VEA, and 30% in the IEMG, your portfolio would invest in 10 1,800 companies from 52 countries, of which 40% is invested in the US, 8% in China, and 6% in Japan. Your total portfolio would have a weighted expense ratio of 0.05%, and over the last five years, that portfolio would have generated a return of 2.5% per year, excluding dividends. And it's very easy to build the world market cap portfolio yourself. The only thing you need to do is keep investing into these three ETFs regularly and do a rebalancing like once a year. Next up is the dividend portfolio. Dividend investing can be a good way to reduce volatility in your portfolio because companies that pay out high dividends are usually more stable and have higher profits that can support high payouts. Also, it's a great way to build a passive income stream. If you want to build a dividend world portfolio yourself, then you can easily do that with two ETFs, one ETF that invests in US dividend stocks, 
another one that invests in international dividend stocks. For the US dividend ETF, you could go for Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF, ticker symbol VYM. It invests in US stocks that are forecasted to have above average dividend yields. It invests in over 400 US companies. The VYM has an expense ratio of 0.06%. One option for an international dividend ETF would be Vanguard's international high dividend yield ETF, ticker symbol VYMI. This one gets you exposed to ex-US, so international stocks with an above average dividend yield. It invests in 1,300 companies from 44 countries. That's what makes this ETF slightly more expensive. It has an expense ratio of 0.22%. If you now invest 40% of your money in the VYM and 60% in the VYMI, your total portfolio would invest in 1,700 companies from 45 countries, of which 40% is invested in the US, 8% in the UK and 7% in Japan. Your total portfolio would have a weighted expense ratio of 0.16%, the most expensive one so far, and over the last five years, that portfolio would have generated a return of 1.3% per year, but excluding dividends. By the way, if you want to see my dedicated video on the best dividend ETFs, its pros and cons, then check out the video in the link. Next up is the green portfolio. And ESG investing is on the rise. It's one of those mega trends that investors are interested in. It's the second most popular investment theme right behind tech. And around 40% of investors are looking to increase their exposure to ESG investments by at least 5%. If you want to know more about ESG, investing its benefits and performance then check out my dedicated ESG video in the link. You can actually build an ESG portfolio with only two ETFs. Again one that invests in ESG US and another one that invests in international ESG stocks. For the ESG US ETF you could go for Vanguard's ESG US stock ETF ticker symbol ESGV. It invests in US companies with above average ESG ratings. It excludes companies from the adult entertainment, alcohol, tobacco, weapons, fossil fuel, gambling, and nuclear power industry. It invests in over 1,400 US companies. The ESGV has an expense ratio of 0.09%, which seems high, but it's actually one of the cheapest you can find in the ESG space. One option for the international ESG ETF would be Vanguard's ESG International Stock ETF, ticker symbol VSGX. This one invests in ESG-friendly companies in developed and emerging markets, excluding the US. It invests in 5,700 companies companies from 51 countries. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.12%, which is very low for what it does. If you now invest 40% of your money in the ESGB and 60% in the VSGX, your total portfolio would invest in 7,200 companies from 52 countries, of which 40% is invested in the US, 10% in Japan, and 4% in the UK. Your total portfolio would have a weighted expense ratio of 0.12%. 1-1%, a bit higher than the first portfolio because of that extra ESG filter, but still much cheaper than the dividend portfolio. The problem with ESG ETFs is that most of them are young, so we don't have five-year performance data here, but over the last four years, that portfolio would have gotten you a return of 6% per year, the highest performance so far, but it also excludes the majority of 2018, which wasn't a good stock market year. What you have probably noticed in all portfolios so far is the high US share. That's because the most valuable companies come from the US and that's why they are dominating global ETFs. This can be an advantage if US stocks continue to outperform in the future, but the thing is, no one knows. One way you could balance off your high US exposure would be to weigh your portfolio by the global GDP distribution. So I had a look at the GDP by country, which looks like this. I then broke them down into US developed and emerging markets. What you end up with is an allocation like this, where 25% of the global GDP is in the US, 40% in other developed countries, and 35% in emerging markets. And again, you can easily build this portfolio yourself. All you need is three ETFs in total, one that invests in the US, another one that invests in developed markets, and one that invests in emerging markets. You could use the same ETFs as in the first portfolio. You just need to adjust the weights to be as close to the global GDP distribution as possible, which means that you invest 25% of your money in the VTI, 40% in the VEA, and 35% in the IEMG. If you do that, your total portfolio would invest 
invests in 10,800 companies from 52 countries, of which 25% is invested in the US, 9% in China, and 8% in Japan. Your total portfolio would have a weighted expense ratio of 0.06%, and over the last five years, that portfolio would have generated a return of 1.1% per year, the lowest performance of all portfolios. So you would have sacrificed a bit of that US art performance over the last few years, but your assets would be distributed more evenly. There you have it. Four globally diversified portfolios that you can easily build yourself. You can go for the ones of this video or adjust it to fit your personal needs. But what do you actually think? Do you have a global ETF portfolio yourself? What are the countries with the highest exposures? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you. If you like what you saw and you want to support this channel, then please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.